It happened on the night of April 14th, one year ago this week. Boko Haram abducted almost 300 schoolgirls from their school in Shabak, Nigeria. Some escaped, but more than 200 remain unaccounted for. They haven't been seen since they were forced to pose for a video shot shortly after their capture, wearing Muslim hijab and chanting from the Quran. Boko Haram claimed the girls had all converted. It's feared they were married off to fighters or worse. Well, the movement Bring Back Our Girls is marking the anniversary with renewed demands to rescue the students. Anger over President Goodluck Jonathan's failure to find the girls contributed to his defeat at the polls last month. Since the abduction, he repeatedly claimed that the government knew where they were, that they would soon be freed. Promises, of course, never fulfilled. We're here to discuss the impact of this case. We have Mojuba Okomi, a professor of political science at Brooklyn College, and in Port Harcourt is Rise News correspondent Sarah First. Sarah, I, I want to start with you first. Uh, is there any progress report in the search for these girls? Well, it's just a couple of days until that uh, sad anniversary, marking one year since the Chibok girls uh, were kidnapped. Uh, and sadly for the families, the friends of those girls, uh, very little progress has actually been made uh, in that year-long period. You've had uh, a lot of pledges made, a lot of promises made, uh, and unfortunately still very little detail here in Nigeria about uh, their whereabouts and about exactly what uh, has happened to those girls. Now, uh, the friends, the family have been holding constant vigils throughout the year and applying pressure to the government to really keep uh, this story in the international focus. You have that big international uh, online campaign, the Bring Back Our Girls uh, hashtag going global, really. Uh, but of course, this has been a daily battle uh, for the families. Uh, and as we said, uh, till this point, one year on almost, uh, and it really has been uh, very little detail coming out. Now, the difficulty is that you've had, especially in the six weeks leading up to this big uh, election period in Nigeria, this massive counterinsurgency operation. So there's been a huge regional pushback of Boko Haram in the northeast of the country, where in areas it's thought the girls uh, have possibly been held. Uh, but it's all been very rapid. It's all been Nigerian military claims. And it's been very difficult to get verification of exactly what has gone on on the ground. We know that there's been a large number of casualties. We know that Boko Haram, for example, have carried out suicide attacks, often using uh, young girls and women as uh, the people to go and carry out the suicide attacks. So uh, there's huge concern about their whereabouts. And, and unfortunately, as that anniversary gets closer, very little information still. Sarah, I want to thank you for that report. We want to go now to Professor Okome. And we were talking uh, before the show started, uh, Professor. You know, I guess we have differing views on this. I'm certainly a man of hope. But after all this time, and there's talks about some of these girls may be married off, and we were talking about even worse, uh, some perhaps sold into the sex slave market, uh, I, I find it kind of uh, not ridiculous, but it seems like it's kind of far-fetched to see though all these girls may be returned. But you, you, you feel otherwise. I know otherwise because I choose to believe in God because when all, um, all human hope mm -hmm. or human-based hope fails, God can make miracles. And I do believe that we live in a world now where there is enough technology, enough capacity to find anybody anywhere. So I know mm -hmm. these girls will be found because also, you know, we have had so many declarations mm -hmm. from the government of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan that they know where these girls are. Mm -hmm. So we are depending on them to give the information that enables for the girls to be returned to their families and for them to be able to resume some kind of semblance of normalcy. Well, I'm a big believer in God as well, Professor Okome. But, you know, I, I got to bring this UN Human Rights uh, Commission report up here saying perhaps the girls might have been killed before the election. Do you give any credence to that at all? I saw a couple of days after that news report was um, on in the media um, another report where the Human Rights Commission said that it did not claim that the girls were killed. Mm -hmm. So I choose to believe the latter. 
In terms of the African Union getting involved in this, it seems that that might be a bright spot in terms of perhaps if these girls can be found, and I hope that they are found, that their involvement in this uh, might be a, a bright spot in, in getting these girls recovered. I think the regional strategy with Nigeria and its neighbors in the northeastern um, states of Nigeria, Cameroon, um, Chad, Niger, will um, contribute to the efforts at finding the girls. Also, the involvement of the AU gives me hope because um, it's an indication that African countries are taking seriously mm. not only the matter of these girls, but the matter of human security in the region. I got two quick questions for you before I let you go here. In terms of uh, technology here, a lot of technology perhaps is not being used. It may be offered to Nigeria to help find these girls. And also, the new president, Buhari, Muhammadu Buhari, is Muslim. Perhaps that might also might be a contributing factor here. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I think besides President Buhari, I want to say, Boko Haram actually attacked President-elect um, president Buhari mm. um, sometime during the campaign um, season or maybe before, a little before. So, you know, his being Muslim does not give him a break with Boko Haram, which only believes in its own version of Islam. Good point. And it's, you know, an outlier to any kind of orthodox or mainstream understanding of Islam. But I think that he's a person who models seriousness and purposefulness. And he has given the assurance that this is one of the most important aspects of what he intends to do, that he wants to harness the energies of the Nigerian people and um, bring peace to the Northeast. I believe him. I also believe him when he says that he can help to find these girls mm -hmm. and recover them. So I think this is a bright light on the horizon mm -hmm. in terms of uh, girls being missing and a hopeful sign that they'll be found. Well, uh, Professor Okomi, thank you for your expertise on this part. We may need you shortly, so stay with us, okay?